In 2010, Visconti released the Homo Sapiens line of writing instruments. It was the first pen to feature the company's new Dream Touch nib made from 23 karat palladium, but more intriguing was the basaltic lava and resin material the pen was made from. Originally offered with bronze hardware, the Homo Sapiens was then released with stainless steel appointments. In April of 2014, Visconti released the Homo Sapiens Crystal, and several months later in September they announced the Florentine Hills, a pen dedicated to the green fields and luscious hills surrounding Visconti's home city. With fire being the dominant element in the previous Homo Sapiens, its juxtaposed force, water, is the crystal's main theme. It was inspired by the raging seas that dominate our planet, always flowing, ever-changing, and never the same. This new addition to the Homo Sapiens line is presented in a large, dark brown lacquered box and limited to 1,000 pieces at a retail price of $995. The crystal utilizes Visconti's arc-shaped billboard clip and features cap rings made from .925 sterling silver. As much as I enjoy the looks of the spring-loaded clip, I've never been a fan of its utility, or lack thereof. It requires both hands to operate and fails to clip the pin to any kind of material with any kind of security. Please don't ask how I know this. But what disappoints me the most is that the clip wasn't entirely filled with black lacquer, leaving an obvious eyesore that should have never left the factory. The top of the cap is finished with a magnetic medallion that can easily be replaced with a number of options from Visconti's My Pen system for further personalization. Uncapping the pen can be accomplished in less than a quarter of a turn thanks to Visconti's patented quick lock system. It's a feature I really like and seems to seal the nib well as I've never had an issue with the nib drying out when left to sit for too long. I've always found the gentle curve of the grip section to be comfortable and aiding the transition from section to barrel is a silver band engraved with the words Homo Sapiens on the front and the individual limited edition number out of 1000 on the back. Just past the band at the beginning of the barrel you'll see two spots of ink, here and here. That can't be removed. I unscrewed the nib unit and tried to clean that area with a cotton swab, but they're not on the inside of the barrel. They're actually sandwiched between two different pieces and can't be removed. You can see some small orange spots from a previous fill, and this is definitely the most disappointing aspect of this pen. I'm guessing this portion will completely fill with ink at some point, and depending on the color of ink used, may become rather unsightly. It looks like I'll be sticking to blues for the foreseeable future. The number 6 size Dream Touch nib is made from 23 karat palladium and offered in 6 sizes, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, and 1.3 millimeter stub. This particular nib is a medium and I have the fine in my Davina and the 1.3 stub in my Homo Sapiens steel. All are wonderfully smooth and free of any performance issues. As good as the nib is, the star of this pen is its material. It's breathtaking. The unique design of this demonstrator fountain pen features ribbons of finely shaved celluloid suspended in clear acrylic on the barrel and in blue-green translucent resin on the cap, filling knob, and section. The see-through effect is an open window to the double reservoir power filling system. The layers of blue-green celluloid ribbons feature a wonderful subtle shimmer and provide a striking visual depth found in few other materials. It's difficult to get a sense of that depth from the video here, but it's easily apparent when in your hand. The resin of the cap becomes transparent near the lip where it's the thinnest. The celluloid ribbons create this dark, shadow-like effect reminiscent of some kind of sea creature just below the surface. Depending on the angle, the green shimmer will either pop out with strong contrast or disappear entirely. Visconti's double reservoir power filler is easy to operate and allows you to carry a ridiculous amount of ink. Unscrew the filling knob, which opens up the seal connecting both reservoirs. Then, pull the knob back insert the business end into your favorite ink, and push the knob down in one smooth motion. Let's try it with some Visconti turquoise and see how it works. The titanium construction of the filling system ensures durability and resistance to any possible corrosion from the harshest of inks. The action is smooth and I've never experienced any sticking or jerkiness. From a completely empty pen, the first stroke will get about half a barrel full of ink, or 1.7 milliliters. That's more than most piston filling pens, but if that's not enough for you, there's a simple way to get a 100% fill. Invert the pen and pull the plunger back. Find a grip that works for you, which may take some practice, and here's a hint, use water if you've never done this before. Push all the air out of the barrel and hold the plunger in this position. Put the pen back in the ink and finish the stroke. You've now got 2.8 milliliters of ink in only two strokes. 
The only other pens that can compete with this kind of capacity are the coned bulk filler or any eyedropper filled pen. The small reservoir acts as sort of an ink window. You can use the pen quite a bit before the reservoir needs refilled, preventing you from having to crack open the filling knob every time you use the pen. Or at least that's how I use it. The look of the pen changes a bit with a barrel full of ink. The sparkle of the blue and green celluloid ribbons really stand out against the dark background of the ink. It'll be fun to fill the pen with different colors to see how it changes the overall tone of the pen. The crystal only comes in the oversize, also known as maxi, and as you can see here it is quite a bit larger than the midi on the right. Uncapped the difference is even more pronounced, especially in regards to the nib. Compared to a few other well known pens, we can see the crystal easily holds its own. From left to right is the Mont Blanc 149, the Visconti Wall Street LE, the Homo Sapiens Crystal, the Visconti Divina Elegance, the Pelican M1000, the Pelican M805, and the Pelican M200. Uncapped, the crystal looks right at home with these big boys. It may not have the oversized nib of the 149 or M1000, but I've honestly never given that a second thought. I love it the way it is. In the hand, this pen feels absolutely marvelous. The cap does post if you wish to do so, but I never felt the need for it. It obviously doesn't have the same feel as the original Homo sapiens made from lava, but then what does? I've never had an issue maintaining a solid grip, and it never felt cheap or plasticky either. Out of the box, the medium nib wrote very well. It was smooth, and depending on the amount of pressure you used, was either slightly dry or slightly wet. The 23 karat palladium nib is known for having some softness to it, so if you apply a little pressure, you can open up the tines which will increase the flow. On the flip side, if you use very light pressure, the nib slit will remain tight with reduced flow, but not to the point of causing any performance issues. I didn't notice any baby's bottom or hard starting issues with this pen, and like I said earlier, you can spread the tines a bit, but don't think of this as a flexible nib. You can easily overdo it and cause irreversible damage. The Homo Sapiens Crystal is just hands down a great pen and one I would highly recommend, even with the two issues I experienced. It certainly doesn't replace the original Homo Sapiens, but rather complements it very well. If you have the budget, don't hesitate to grab the crystal because it's selling out at many retailers and I have a feeling you won't be seeing many of these on the used market. For more information and lots more eye candy, please see my written review at fpgeeks.com. Indulge in